Tonight's uh, planning board meeting for Thursday, March 16th, 2023. Could everybody please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and welcome. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, my fellow board members to my left, Mr. Paul Amatucci, Mr. Jerry Grable, uh, myself, Vice Chair Phil Roy, to my right, Mr. Dan Ganarelli, and uh, Cameron Haldick, Haladic, yep. and uh, Irish Griffith, our code enforcement agent, and uh, from SMPDC, our uh, planner, uh, Hannah Boney. And uh, our, uh, our planning board technician, Mr. Dave Andreessen. <clears throat> All right, we'll open up the first public comment. Anybody who wishes to make a comment, please come up to the podium so uh, we can hear your voice and they can see you on the camera at home. Separate from public uh, This is the public comment. And then we'll have a public hearing after that. All right, at this time, we'll close the public comment. Um, we'll go ahead and open the public hearing for Woodland Pond Cluster Subdivision, Map R7, Lot 2, and Map R8, Lot 66, Altus Engineering. When you come up, please state your name and your address, please. Um, Kara Moline, 47 Alley Pond Road. I am in front of you. Again, um, to reiterate my concerns about the impact of the Wetland Pond subdivision. Um, back on the meeting on February 16th, Altus Engineer submitted an extensive packet which included a letter dated November 30th of 2022 from IFNW. And there was acknowledgement of um, endangered species in the area. When that letter was drafted, they were not fully updated by Derek Yorks of IFNW, and he has only recently submitted his findings. I believe that if that letter was written today, it would look very different, acknowledging the existence of a documented nest site of the Blanding's turtle within the proposed area of the subdivision. This habitat will directly and adversely, adversely affect, be affected by the project, as it it is in the road. Um, the turtle will continue to nest at the same location year after year, and these turtles can live 70 plus years. Um, with road mortality being one of the major contributing factors to their decline, this is concerning. And regarding road mortality, um, this does not just pertain to the vehicles of the neighborhood, but off-road vehicles as well can be a problem. Um, there's a large number of vehicles in the off and off-road vehicles that access the area Not just the ones from the neighborhood, but surrounding areas and I recommend maybe another traffic study be done uh, During the warmer weathers whether when this is more active to consider this Maybe there could be some thought on possibly restricting access to only occur during the times when terrestrial activity for the turtles is low at the last meeting, I provided you with the details from IFNW regarding a confirmed nest site directly in the dirt road. Just because the road is already in does not negate the fact that it is on top of a nest site of the Blanding's turtle, a species of greatest conservation need and needs to be protected. Turtles require a range of environments to survive, not just the pond and wetlands, but sandy areas as well to lay their eggs. They take 14 to 20 years to reach sexual maturity and a generation cycle of greater than 35 years. So one loss is huge. If this development is approved as is, it will contribute to the threats of the endangered species in the area. If this development is approved, please review the covenants and restrictions under the HOA bylaws and I would ask that there be a restriction considered in regards to farm animals. 
the runoff of animal waste into the surrounding wetlands and these houses abut the wetlands could cause algae blooms in toxic environments for all creatures endangered or not. And I do appreciate the mention of organic fertilizers and pesticides. Um, but again, how will it be enforced and who will enforce it? So the discovery of this endangered turtle nest site is new as of last spring. And where it is so new, I implore the town to request a full review of the area prior to the approval of the proposed subdivision. This environment is a resource of state significance and provides habitat vital to wildlife. That includes many threatened and endangered species. Please have this area reviewed. Please give them time to get in there and take a look. It's pretty stunning what's there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else for the public hearing for Woodland Pond Cluster Subdivision? Okay, we'll close the uh, public hearing for that. Uh, next on the agenda is the approval of minutes for the March 2nd, 2023 meeting. Uh, I was absent that meeting, so I will abstain. I'll make a motion to approve as written. I'll second that. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All, uh, all in agreement. Okay, unanimous vote uh, across the board. Uh, we will accept the minutes as drafted. <clears throat> okay, old business. Uh, Woodland Pond Cluster Subdivision map. R7 lot 2 and map R8 lot 66 uh, Altus Engineering. <clears throat> All right, good evening everybody. Uh, for the record, I'm Eric Sowery from Altus Engineering. I have Troy Williams with me who is the uh, the realtor for the project. Not a lot to add today. The plans have not changed. Um, I've done a few little tweaks in the meantime, but I'm awaiting comments from the town engineer, so I'm not going to resubmit until I get those and incorporate uh, whatever changes they require. Um, just to let you know, I've added uh, the gate that we talked about at the end of the existing road uh, to prevent vehicular, vehicular traffic from going off into the woods. Uh, I've also, I also designed the dry hydrant today to re completely replace it. Um, as far as environmental concerns, I was finally able to get in touch with Derek Yorks. Um, he said, hey, let's have a meeting and talk about this. And I said, sure, great, when? And I haven't heard anything back. So it's out there. We are discussing it. So that, that correspondence will hopefully continue and, and gather some steam as we go forward here. So that's it in a nutshell. So I have nothing else to add unless you so, guys have questions. So you're saying the dry hydrant is uh, we're going to replace the whole completely replaced. Completely with replaced. Brand new. Yeah, because I have no idea what's going on on the ground. It's, it's steel. It should have been PVC to begin with. Um, so it, it doesn't work now. So but it's going to be the, easier to replace it, I think. How about the fence around around it to protect it? Uh, usually we just put a couple. Usually we just put a couple of bollards. Okay. Because the fire department does need to get at it. Yeah, um, okay. So you don't really want to fence it. Okay. That's, a snowbank's going to end up right in front of it, and they won't be able to open the gate. Yeah. So, there you go. Yeah. And you're paving that area, correct? We are going to pave that. I, mean, I put okay. a little 12-foot wide turn out there so the fire truck will have uh, room to pull off. Okay. And it looks like in the old plan, the old easement plan, there was supposed to be a little backup area on the other side of the road that never got built. So I put that in the plan as well. Oh, good. So that, that way they can actually turn around rather than try to back all the way out, which is, right. that's just not going to work. Thanks, sir. So if I understood your comments, you, you are playing phone tag with IFNW yes. currently? E email okay. tag, yep. They have not provided you any additional information? No, he, he just said, yes, there, there's uh, species in the neighborhood, the black racer and uh, the blanding turtle. Okay. And he said, yeah, we know they're out there, and let's have a time. And haven't set okay. a time yet. So they'll make some recommendations to you, I assume? Yeah, I assume? yeah okay. usually they do. Okay. All right. Excellent. Okay. Any questions from the board? All right. Thank okay. you, sir. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, sir. All right. New business. Uh, sketch plan review for uh, major subdivision preserves at Rolling Meadow, map R45, lot 39, uh, also at Tower Engineering. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Mr. Vice Chair. Um, for the record, Mike Sudak, Atar Engineering, here on behalf of Providential Equity Development. Um, I have Pat Carroll here, my client, with me tonight. Um, I also have hard copies, if you prefer. I put those up on your preference. I know you have some in your packets, but... Uh, it might be good for the people in attendance if you do have them. Do we have a... Can we get the easel yeah. set up? I can get you.
My apologies for not having that set up for you. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Okay. So for the right half of the board, I know this is going to look a little bit familiar for you, so I'll try and not stare at you two gentlemen for the majority of it. But um, So this is the Preserve at Rolling Meadows. This is a project that in a different iteration was before the board in 2021 and 2022. Um, it's 42 and a half acres. It's in the R2 zone, probably a 10-minute walk north of here. It's a dual frontage lot on Pine Hill Road and Knox Lane. And in the previous iteration, um, it received preliminary subdivision approval as a more conventional cluster development, single family lots. Um, and we're back here before you with a new proposed use for elderly housing. Um, there's 55 proposed, 55 and older lots uh, on here right now. Um, the plan said should, lo should look pretty damn similar to the last iterations for those of you familiar with it. All of our infrastructure isn't changing, roadways are going to be in the same place, uh, utilities in the same place, stormwater management areas uh, in the same place. <coughs> the open space reservation is going to be the same. Some of the geometry slightly changed in the rear of the lots just to, to make some, some compliance uh, with your ordinance work. Uh, besides that, um, that's really all I have, you know, just a, a change of use here. So we're starting the application process over again. I'd be happy to field any questions, but I think that's it for my overview. Thank you. So, so what has changed <coughs> other than the use? Just the number of lots we're proposing associated with that use. Um, you know, we're. Uh, so, wh where are you going from and to? So, it it was a cluster subdivision of single family residences, right. so non age restricted, and now we're proposing elderly housing, which in Berwick is fifty five and older. Right. Um, you know, re really the. The so thought the process. The number of units is still the same. No, nope, the number of units was twenty six. In the previous iteration, um, and I believe we have a conventional plan that shows that just for Berwick's ordinance sake. And what we're proposing now is 55, 50. I know, I know, it's a redundant number, 55 units of 55 and older housing. I know. Um, so really, the thought process behind that was um, since this lot has public utilities available, both water and sewer, the density in the R2 zone is considerably lower. It's three times lower. So 20,000 square foot lots as opposed to 60 if you're not available or you can't use both those utilities. So we're trying to take advantage of a little more of the density that we have available to us here. I think by density we could fit 64, um, but just from a geometry perspective, we can only get 55 in there. So just trying to take a little bit more advantage of that. And, you know, it, it's um, it should be a pretty good development. It's pretty close to downtown. I know you guys are doing a lot here with the edge. This is going to have sidewalks connecting to sidewalks. It's probably a 10 or 15 minute walk north of here. Um, so I think it should be a nice little community and I see so you pointing. Did, did we have a, uh, a traffic study on the last one? Yep. So so we have more units, so shouldn't we redo that? We absolutely will, yeah. So this is, as I said before, um, we're starting the process over because this is a change of use. So once we get past this meeting, you know, we ha we've had um, full review by DEP, IFNW, um, natural areas program. We had a traffic study done that we will update for the proposed use now. Um, so it's really just getting the ball rolling again. And what what applied from last time will will get sent to you already. And what needs to be updated will. Does that change of use uh, or intended use? Does that change the minimum lot size? Mm -hmm. It does. It does. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. The last well, time we addressed this, when we had the public, you know, what do you call it, the uh, site walk. Yes. Yep. There was concern about the houses that are already there and screening. I don't see anything on there unless it's a note about screening. Yep. So there's actually something in your ordinance that I wanted to either make aware to your uh, your planner from SMPDC or have a conversation about here with regards to that. Um, just, I'm, I'm sorry, I forget your, your name, ma'am. Hannah. Hannah, Hannah, thank you. Irish is over there. Um, so this is your cl your cluster ordinance. This is 8.8.c.16, .8 and it relates to um, 
a, if a proposed number of utes relative, relative to density. Um, I'm not going to read it verbatim, but it, it does require a 50 foot landscaped perimeter, effectively, 25 feet of which has to be filled with a certain mix of uh, evergreen shrubs, trees, fences, what have you. So that is going to be addressed once we, you know, get into that process further on. But, yep. Okay. okay. What, what did you just ask? Sorry. About screening. Like, yeah. Can you show me where that? Screening from the existing homes. Okay. There's yeah. existing um, homes. Yeah. So on your, on your old drawing from December, mm -hmm. there was wetland, uh, sorry, retention ponds placed in on that drawing. Yep. And there's none on this new drawing. Right. So, yep. Yeah, um, I, I wanted this to just be more of a, yep. a, I just, sur a surface level. We said we transferred everything from the old drawing, so that's why I'm just asking. Fair enough, yeah. Yep. All of the stormwater easements will be in the exact same place as they are on that older plan. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I wanted to try and keep this one simple. I apologize on that. Have you taken any effort towards addressing the additional runoff by doubling the amount of residences that are going to be in there in the traffic flow um, mm -hmm. just you know concerns about runoff from vehicles and then to piggyback on the retention pond issues and I know there were some concerns when we did the site walk there there's a low area um, that collects water and, and it's right in somebody's backyard I just don't want to create a situation where we're we've got double the amount of vehicles and the byproduct of those vehicles <clears throat> being parked, washing into somebody's backyard. Is there any provision for you guys to mitigate that? Yeah, um, it's a fair comment. So um, again, again, the traffic study is going to be looked at at a, at a prior to a future meeting. I'll say that. Um, you know, once you get into the elderly housing codes in ITE, the, the trip generation values from those go down from ten, which is a single family residence detached, to. Boy, I forget off the top of my head. I believe it's like three and change for an elderly housing attached or detached. I'll, I'll have all that information um, when we have Sewell revise the, the traffic study that gets submitted. But yeah, it's a fair question. Otherwise, um, there probably will be a little bit more impervious just from the number of driveways. So, um, you know, we intend on having the stormwater management areas be in the same place. If they need to be upsized relative to that increase in impervious cover, then so be it. Maybe we lose a lot or two just because the easement has to be made a little bit bigger to accommodate a bigger um, treatment area. And I, I think on previous revisions we had also talked about uh, when you do snow removal having you know melting areas and it, it almost looks like that might be eliminated due to the, the density. Am I making a false assumption on that? Or Eliminated no but I, I would have to say reimagined. Um, so, okay. Some of the places that I know pre flowery word choice but yeah some of the places that they were proposed before um, might be where we need a driveway to go right now. We're, we're going to try and do shared driveways uh, wherever possible. Just, you know, we do have some thin ribbons of wetlands out there, and that was the proposal in the previous iteration to have shared driveways only have one crossing of those. Um, so, yeah, the um, snow storage locations will need to be uh, managed differently than how they were previously. But okay. I believe that can be accommodated. So I missed all the previous, um, I, I'm new to this one too. No so problem. are you proposing like just regular stick belt homes? Are you proposing a proposal for modulars, manufactured stick belt? What are we putting in there for houses? Do you want to speak to that one, Pat? I'm sorry. <clears throat> Pat you know Carroll, Providential on. Equity Development. <laughs> yes, to answer your question, we are proposing to do stick belt homes. Um, smaller, probably 1,600 or so square feet. Um, energy efficient. You know, nice. My energy codes will make home. sure you're energy efficient. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. I just didn't know if it was like going to be another because I know there's a mobile home park right there already. And I didn't know if this was. What Not was looking it. to do a mobile home park. Okay. okay. So this is going to be straight up housing. housing. Yeah. And, and these would be traditional basement or built on a slab? Probably on slabs. Okay. Just not a big fan of crawl spaces. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, yeah, you've got some soupy soil there. Yep. Yeah. It just, yeah. Well, for foundation on a slab mm -hmm. seems to be the way to go. Single story. All right. 
Thank you, Pat. Any additional questions from the board? Mr. Vice Chair, if I may. Yes. Um, I, I do just want to echo what Pat said. Um, I believe your mobile, I believe it's a completely separate section for mobile housing, and that's not, I think we're just sticking with straight 8.24 elderly housing, separating ourselves from any mobile housing potential. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Just wanted to make that clear. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Uh, Actually, do you have anything to add? Can any input or advice uh, with regard to this one? <clears throat> um, nothing at this point. I haven't done my full review yet. I typically don't do that till they uh, submit the full preliminary submission. Um, the the additional density was something that was new to me, so I'll be interested to read exactly how that plays out in the ordinance. Um, but other than that. Nothing, nothing at this point. Okay. I think my only other concern would be our uh, the impact to our, our water and sewer district, and I would want, obviously, comment from them yep. uh, when, when we get to that point. But yeah, updated statements of capacity um, from both districts will go with the preliminary. Happy to do that. I did want to make one uh, one last comment. Um, when I was speaking with Dave, Dave about this a couple of weeks ago, and it's been brought up a couple of points tonight um, regarding the old site walk, we're happy to facilitate getting you guys back out there again, um, maybe a little bit uh, of time from now with our <laughs> wonderful new storm. But yeah, we're happy to, um, you know, have that part of the process whenever it whenever it comes up in the approval. So I, I almost think there'd be value in seeing the spring runoff and, and where that naturally goes um, sure. especially if we're proposing to, to double the size um, i know there were some significant concerns brought up with the abutters with with regard to how wet it is there and what the direction the runoff goes so um, if we could schedule it for a time that we'd be able to do that i can i can cane along with you <laughs> okay <laughs> uh do we want to say maybe two weeks from now, if if that works, what's what's available on the calendar? Um, not not available. Two not weeks. available. So a month. A month out. Two two four weeks. <clears throat> Before we schedule a site walk, you have to approve the application complete. He's not providing an application okay. yet. This is sketch plan. Okay. So at the next meeting in three weeks. It's going to be three weeks. Um, if he submits the application, you guys rule it as complete. Then we would do two weeks after that. Okay. There's still be spring runoff. Okay. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. Nothing further? No. All right. Thank you for your time, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. All right, uh, we will open up the next public comment. Uh, if you come up to the microphone, please state your name and your address. Yes, ma'am. Yep. Yes, ma'am. Um, I didn't have my bearings quite about me. I can kind of go fast. Um, number one. Ma'am, could you state your name and your address? Angela please? Spokash, 3 Johnny Lane. Thank you, ma'am. Um, number one concern I had was the first, um, what do you call it, like walk through the site walk. Um, we had a 24 hour notice. Um, and then the meeting was directly after. My husband was at work. There was no way he could make it. The first notice, there was no date on it. So that's a concern. Um, we had literally no time, like 24 hours, I ran down there. Um, that was my first concern. Um, my second concern would obviously be the amount of houses in this subdivision. It says 11, okay. So I moved in onto Johnny Lane nine years ago. And when I moved in, I think there were six houses. Um, and then I heard they were connecting to Alley Pond and I would take walks to see how many more lots there were. I thought, well, okay, that's two lots. That's another two lots. Okay, fine, whatever. And then to hear the subdivision, okay. So I have children that are 14 and 12. I have grandchildren that are five and three. We are up and down that road 
walking and expecting safety, expecting not so much traffic. That is a huge concern. Another concern is every time they would build a home, the amount of trucks that would go by, cement trucks or whatever you'd see go by, I mean, that alone with just like two houses per year was very, it was very much. And now to think, of how would that work when you're putting in 11 homes at one time? Like how, like, is that gonna be, is there some way to like, that you're setting up that that's not gonna be going by my home every five minutes? You know, this is a major, major concern to add 11 homes. I don't know how many people here live on Johnny Lane or Alley Pond that probably moved in thinking they have small children and grandchildren. They can just step out the door, you know. And as of now, you know, a 14 and 12 year old trying to be on their scooters and whatnot, just trying to go down to the end of the street and grandchildren just walking them. And even now, you know, having to grab my hand and, and, you know, just make sure the amount of traffic we have already added is a lot. And now to add 11 homes. So from this point on, what are our options to make this stop? Do we have options to make this stop? To help this, to stop 11 more houses from going into a neighborhood that was probably, I don't know about anybody else, that was probably only supposed to have 7, 11, 12 homes. Are there options? What are our options? Yeah, well, ma'am, I, I will offer growth is difficult, and it, and it always is, and especially in small towns. Um, if it is an approved use and it, it is at the landowner's purview to, to do what they want with their land, and if it is an approved use, there there is not much that the town can do to, to stop somebody developing their land if it was within the land use ordinance and within the confines of, of what's legal. Um, the only way you would be able to stop a subdivision would be able would be to buy that property. And, so what, and, the woman that was here earlier that brought up the piece, the environmental piece and with the turtles, and, like that doesn't, that's what still, does that But do? that's still pending. So mm -hmm. we are gonna, they are going to meet with the DEP and have that meeting and we will be provided that information and then we have to make the best risk-based decision uh, based on what the experts tell us. And, and that that's how the process works. And I don't know if you have more to add, Irish. Yeah, basically, <clears throat> long story short, regardless of what the Inland Fisheries and Wildlife finds, there will be, it may modify the plans to preserve more of these habitats, but the project is gonna ultimately end up going, going on in some measure. Yeah. Because realistically speaking, he owns the land and I understand how frustrating it is when you bought a place. Yeah, a selling stay. point was that it was really like going to be a dead end. Really, that, that was it. So, realtors, does the value of realtors, our property go down? Realtors, I don't do value. I don't do property value. That's a real estate thing. But Excuse realtors me. like to do this. Mr. Chair, um, yes. one thing we don't have the applicant here. We really shouldn't be discussing this application. Okay, understood. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and that's uh, my fault for not. Uh, Addressing the addressing the meeting during the first public comment, ma'am, okay. and it, it is confusing. We do multiple public yeah. comments, and I and I, no. I sympathize with you, um, but we can have that discussion again. There will be another public hearing before the project is approved. I would I would encourage you to come and, and have your voice heard. But uh, Mr. Andreessen is correct. With without the applicant here, um, it is not a fair and due process. So there are questions on the property, the the value of our property would be towards. A, a, real a real estate there, real estate. There's nothing the town can do regarding that, ma'am, because if it's an approved use and the landowner decides they want to subdivide, there, there's if it meets the requirements that's voted on by the town, it, there's nothing we can do short of... Can you, excuse me, <clears throat> what, what were you speaking of when you came up behind me? I'm unsure. What, what did you say? Uh, he just... So he the... the uh, you should have spoken during the first public comment. And that's my fault for not making it more clear. It's hard to get your story. bearings about you when you first walk in. And, it is. And I this, I, I'm not good at public speaking. I, so. Well, you killed it. For somebody who's not good at it, you did a <laughs> wonderful job. So you, <laughs> don't sell yourself short. But uh, what I would say is we have heard your comments. Um, I would encourage you to come back for the next public comment on this and, yeah. and have it heard when the developer is here and let them address those concerns. But if it is an approved use for the land, there, it meets the requirements.
the board. Well, we has have to more um, yeah. advance notice. I can't speak to that, Dave. Because you? we so, had a very short I'll notice on this. Okay. All right. So I guess generically, okay. generically speaking, not just about this development, though. Something that everybody should be aware of. Yes, realtors will tell you that this is forever going to be empty behind you. Mm -hmm. That's a, a due diligence thing where if you don't own it, it can be built on potentially by somebody else. Um, as far as your question to what the value of your property, that is a real estate question. It's not something that the board, myself, Dave, any of us here would answer. Okay. We don't value properties. We, we do the codes. Um, when you're looking at something that is potentially going to be built in your backyard anywhere that is beyond your ability to stop because you can't buy out the developer, um, then a good thought process, and I say this generically speaking, but knowing that we're on air and everybody that's had to deal with any sort of change can hear this, sometimes you have to accept what's coming and just see what you can how you can make the most out of it so you may not you, you can't come up here and say I want everything to stop so but you questions. might be but you might be able to say okay you know what so can we make sure that this happens that we get this type of screening that some fences go up so perhaps give some thought to that too what you okay. might want to ask of a developer before okay. another meeting okay I asked about that because on the same day that we got the letter in 24 hours notice I also had a thing from a realtor, actually from the woman who sold our home at the I same will. exact day. And there's somebody here, I think, is there a realtor here? He came up to me and he said, may I see that, please? Are, I'm going is that to per, Troy, from, Will, Troy Williams? I'm going to I'm, refrain from commenting on the mail you guys received. I think that No, is there a realtor here named Troy Williams? No. No longer. Okay. Because he was the one that asked to see that. Yeah. Okay, I guess for now, that's all I have to say. Thank you for your comments. <clears throat> My name is Carrie Hilliard, 11 Alley Pond Road. It's not directly related to that, but kind of the general, like how everything kind of works. My understanding, you know, just after you talking. Um, has the town ever thought of like ordinances of minimum lots? I know other places like Elliot and stuff, in order to build, because there is one particular person that owns like 500 acres. So if you're saying if a person owns that amount of land, what's to stop them from building on, you know, putting, I mean, 500 acres, that is a huge quantity of houses in this town. I mean, how are you going to the school district? I mean, my taxes have gone up phenomenally since I first moved into that neighborhood. Um, it's just so many things that seem like it's just a snowball effect. And one person to have so much control over so much land, I feel like something needs to be done. If he's putting 11 houses, what is he gonna do on the remainder of that property? You know, and to speak to maybe that project in particular, um, but I'm sure it occurs in other places of Berwick as well. Um, the wetlands, that is a huge concern. Um, the wildlife in our neighborhood has like in my backyard has drastically increased since they put those homes in, you know, just a couple more homes because they have nowhere to go. There's gonna be more wildlife being hit. Um, and also to speak to like endangered species, do we want to be that town of one particular species who is going up for the federal like level one of endangered species status to be put there? Do we wanna be that town that's gonna be like, who cares? Let this let this species go. I don't want to live in a community like that. I don't. I didn't want my children to grow up in an area like that. That's not what I came here for. If I wanted to live in a city, I would have been in Dover. I would have been in Portsmouth. I would have been, heck, Summersworth now is going huge. And people are moving up and up and up. And I just feel like maybe putting something like that in the town may be the way to go, especially if somebody owns so much land. I also have a question in relation to the endangered species and um, the Inland Fish and Wildlife Department. I know portions of land can be labeled um, as, um, oh gosh, I'm losing my word right now because I don't like public speaking, um, can be labeled as, as essential habitat. And um, 
that you need to fill out an application for that to be labeled. And I, it looked like from the application that I saw on their website that that was something that the town had to do. So I just think in any of these projects, if there is consideration of endangered species, and it could be in the other project as well. I mean, how do we know? You know, it just happened in this one particular project that it came to fruition, that it was public knowledge. Um, that these things be looked at in a time frame. I mean, looking at endangered species <laughs> that are dormant at this time of year to look to see if they're there, you're not going to see any evidence of it. So at least pushing things out until appropriate measures can be taken to see if they're there, if they're present, what the impact is going to be. I know I have particularly seen both of them in question. Um, and, and I mean, that's all I'm asking for. I want to live in a community that I'm proud of that makes decisions that are going to be long term for for the future, you know, not only of us, but for for the animals out there, too. So, you know, I, that's all, thanks just all one I, comment. To, yeah. to, uh, and I would encourage you to watch the the uh, joint board where the uh, planning board met with the select board. And it, and it was news to me because there was a point in time not that long ago that they did limit building permits for those very reasons. So yeah. the planning board and the select board are very uh, understanding of, of growth and the rate of growth and, and they have in the past limited building permits. So that is something that is on their scope. So don't yeah. think we're just blindly, if it meets it, no, it goes. And, and so. I don't, but it's just like, you know, the comment that was made with if somebody has the land that they can build on it. And I mean, pushing out and limiting the amount of building permits, I do remember that. I've lived mm -hmm. in the town long enough to remember that. It's just some uh, some towns, like I know I know Elliot did it just because I remember seeing it, that I think their building lots have to be three acres. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I mean, that also preserves the environment, preserves what people are looking for. I mean, you're looking for a rural environment when you're coming here. You're not looking for a house built upon a house, built upon a house, built upon a house. I want trees. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, so, I mean, something like that may also be like a consideration from the town. Um, and also just maybe for more information, like where does this go from here with like these projects being developed on? If you guys could well, attest I, an answer to that. Well, if just for a second. Um, when we sitting at the planning board here can only deal with what's in front of us okay. and what the ordinances are today, mm -hmm. now. Yeah. And if something comes to us today and it meets the ordinance, there's nothing we can do except approve it. So I would say that you have very good points. And, you know, I love this town and I don't want to see it become something uh, that it wasn't over 20 years ago when I moved here. Uh, but you can't do it today for a project that's on the board today. Yeah. So what you have to do is get active. You have to go to the selectmen meetings. You have to go to the planning board meetings. You have to be active in the town to get ahead of it to say, okay, you may have 500 acres, but according to the new plan that you want, here's how we do it. Here's how yeah. we can. So you, it, it can only be here at this board because we're hamstrung. We have no way where to go except to approve something that meets the ordinance. Yeah, I understand that. I'm just saying like moving forward, and you know, being someone who you know did have small children, and now I'm at the point where I can, you know, kind of breathe. Um, it's like I, I'm gonna have to be honest. The fact that I don't understand how this whole entire process works, I, I really don't. Like, I don't know where you guys go from here with these projects. Can I like interrupt? so? And yeah, you, I want to yeah. give you. I want to give you just a quick little zoning 101, which I think is. Do I have part to stand of, up here anymore? No, you don't. Okay. <laughs> I think. Thank you for your comments. I think. I think part of where the confusion lies. So if you and you can actually access our land use ordinance online, um, and it's. You're, you're going to want to jump to in the physical copy. It's page 33. Okay, there is everything is, is divvied up by zones. We have a, a group, a, a very fancy chart that shows what can be done in each zone, as far as residential, commercial, whatever, per each zone in town. Now each zone has lot size requirements, so we do have those requirements. I think the confusion with a lot of these projects is that. When you're looking at an individual lot size, 
in a in a subdivision like this, they have the option to do what's called a cluster a cluster development. So what that does, say he decides to develop, uh, you know, um, I buy a hundred acres, and I decide that, you know what? Okay, it's it's a it's a three acre lot requirement, so I can put X number of houses in there. Well, I could space them out all over my hundred acres, or I could do a cluster subdivision which would put all the houses closer together, but in doing that requires me to keep all of this other land available. So when you look at these plans and you see open space, that's how they're making up the difference. So the house lot that it sits on might be smaller, but they're still required to have that open space and that open space, once it's part of that development, cannot be built upon. So it's not like but it's not like I can take my 100 acres, do a, a cluster subdivision over here, and then wait five years and then just build out the rest of the land. The rest of that land has been promised as open space in exchange for keeping all of my stuff together. And the reason that we allow that under zoning is because when you build places closer together, like if you have 100 acres and you only build on 25 of it, you leave the rest of that unspoiled. You use a lot less... Uh, there's a lot less disruption to the soil, so a lot less chance for pollution, runoff, all this stuff. So I think that's part of the confusion, too. So it doesn't matter how much land somebody necessarily owns. Um, they, they're required to follow their ordinances still. So when you're looking at this stuff, I would strongly encourage anybody who's interested to go on, look at the land use ordinance. Um, you will want to look at the cluster subdivisions because that's what a lot of these come up as. Uh, but look at how the rules flow and look at what your minimum lot sizes are for each area, for each zone. I think that if you're going to, you know, potentially push towards having the selectmen enlarge lot sizes, you should definitely be aware of what the current lot size requirements are and how that all works. And you can always call me and I will help, help, help happily help you understand things, but apparently not in English because I can't speak it tonight. <laughs> but... I will gladly help you guys I figure that, that out. Very much because this, this is why it's I confusing. It is confusing. Man, if you're if you're going to speak, you have to come up to the microphone because they they can't hear you on. <laughs> no worries. Yeah. No, it is it is confusing, and I wanted to make sure you guys were aware that there are rules, and it's not just they own it; they can build on it. They have to own X amount. They can build on X amount. They have to leave X amount open. So there is there is that. Okay, if that helps any. Did you have something to say, ma'am? You can come on up to the microphone. I'll stop talking. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> you might be able to actually help in my questions or statements. Uh, Kelsey Blindo, 17 Johnny Lane. Um, I have a comment about the plot plan as it's currently laid out on the long document around page, I believe it was 170 out of the 255. Um, I'm, a, I'm the existing house on the border, lot number 32. The existing plan shows... Yeah. The, because this, the applicant is not here, okay. and they, we, we can't have totally you speak fine. to that. But could we have the, you come back the next time they, they are yes, here? Yes, if I'm given a notice comment. for it and make arrangements. Um, but yeah, one's about the plot. It'll be next meeting. Plot plan. Like my driveway is not shown correctly, so I just don't want other things to be off. And then my other statement was about the water, disrupting of like the water quality of, of that. So okay. two statements okay. that I wanted to. I didn't know if that was like the. Final in no layout. There'll be a, there'll be another or, public hearing, and I would encourage you. We we have to have the the owner and the developer here because it's not for them. Do fair yeah. process for them if they're not here. Perfect. Um, and yes, and you guys can always keep an eye on the calendar too. The agendas are posted up there. Okay, um, under excellent. under planning board. Um, so there was one thing that I was going to say about that lot. Oh, is there going to be another walk? I mean, it's covered now in snow, so it's really hard to do. But, like, will there be another walk through for borderline no, stuff type stuff? I don't believe so. No, okay. No, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other uh, public comment? <laughs> Can you answer the part about how we move forward with this? Like, what happens now? Because I don't know the whole process. Like, with, like, these projects, like, what happens? Like, what's the... 
protocol. I'm sorry. I'm yep. new to it. I don't know. No, no worries. <laughs> uh, okay. there, it is on our website, but just to give you a, a brief synopsis. So they come in, they come in with sketch plan. Sketch plan comes in. Hey, we're, we're thinking about doing this. They apply for permitting. Um, there's conditions. They have to meet all of the conditions. It, it's not just because they present it tonight doesn't mean it is or is not happening. They have to go through the process. So there will be additional uh, pieces that go into it with regard to the permitting. Um, and we can place conditions upon the applicant based on our observations and based on your public comment. Um, and those and those happen. That does happen. If, you, if you're going to speak, you have to come up to the microphone, ma'am. You have to come to them. Sorry. <laughs> it's just we have people watching from home and they can't hear you. The date of the next three meeting. Three date of the next meeting three weeks from is tonight. three weeks from tonight. Excellent. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Any other public comment? Okay, moving on to informational items. Iris, do you have any informational items? Um, Mr. Dave does. Mr. Andres? Go ahead. Which part of my Actually, I'll be real quick. You did close the public hearing tonight. I would reopen the public hearing tonight. Otherwise, I'm going to have to advertise it all over again. And we know what that's like, okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. There was a gentleman who was here who was, uh, he was, he went to the site walk with me. He acknowledges, even though I spend $8.56 per letter to mail out to you guys, you guys didn't all get it. You guys are... Um, the abutters, I applaud yeah. you guys for the <clears throat> rally call, but I would I would appreciate if we would keep the public hearing. Okay, open. Yeah. okay, then let's do that. Thank you for that recommendation, okay. Mr. Andreessen. Okay, so we'll keep the public comment open. Yeah. Public, public hearing. Public oh, hearing. Yeah. Sorry. Um, I do have uh, one application that's going to be presented to Dave. I'm going to have to talk to you or Lee J about it, Hannah. Um, it's a uh, going to be a simple subdivision amendment um, and it's brought about by an error made by my predecessor. So I think it'll be quick and easy. I just want to make sure that we do the, do the right thing and do right by the, the purchaser as well as um, and I am working on a few land use updates that hopefully might go to vote in November. Um, and otherwise, I don't think, um, I, I am also creating a semi-specific list of things I'd like to see on some of these uh, site plans and subdivision plans so that just to give me a little more teeth for enforcement if that's okay with the board, if you guys don't mind that I interject my two cents when it comes time to conditions and things on the plans. We like that. Good. <laughs> Sounds good. We like good. that. Keep doing I, it. I, like know, it. I know what I need to be able to um, enforce if these people are not sticking to what they've told us. So I know what I need on the papers, and I just want to make sure that for the town, for the abutters, for my own sanity that it all gets put on the paper as should be. But I think that's about it. I don't think I have a whole lot for you guys tonight. Yeah, I for one okay. believe that, you know, when we sit here and we approve a project, we turn it over to you. Yes. And then um, we're just making the assumption that everything, well, every condition that we put on that is going to be met and you're the only backstop for that. So, yeah, please speak up. We really need to know. <laughs> okay, thank you. So in reopening the uh, public hearing, can we do that without the developer here? Are we allowed to do that? We are. Okay. All right. Three weeks. But you're not going to have a public hearing right now. I understand. So yeah, we're going to continue weeks. that the next, the next, next meeting. meeting. Continue next to meeting. the next meeting. Three weeks. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. So Dave, that will definitely be in three weeks? Yes? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Any informational items other than that, Mr. Andreessen? Any informational items, Irish? No, I think that's it. Okay. Yeah. I can't and think of anything. Anything from our SMPDC support? Um, can I just ask a quick question to Dave? 
Um, we received the comments today, the engineering comments for the Woodland Pond, Woodland Acres uh, subdivision. Are you sending that along to the engineer or was I? I will send it along to the engineer. Perfect. Thank okay. you. Okay, you guys got that version that I, I gave it to the planning board as well today. Perfect. Okay. Just wanted to make sure they they were going to get it. Neither of us were expecting the other one to do it, and then it never happened. Okay. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> now it's never happened before. <laughs> All right. If there's nothing further, do I have a motion for adjournment? I make the motion that we adjourn the planning board meeting this evening. I'll second that motion. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, this concludes uh, this evening's planning board meeting. Thank you. Thank yes. you sir. Hannah, I'll, oh, Hannah, I'll send you an email.